Hello and welcome to episode nine. Yep, we're getting up there, number nine this week. Really, really excited to have everybody with me today from across the country. Um, as I've said before, this is my passion. I love doing this. I love helping out families. I love helping out resources. Uh, I enjoy doing this every single week. Hopefully uh, you enjoy listening to it as well. And again, if you really enjoy this, please like it. If you love it, please share it. Uh, one thing you can also do is go to the, your uh, notifications and click on, um, click on your settings and be able to get notified that we're having this every single week. So if I change up the time like I did this week, uh, that won't bother you because you'll know uh, that it's uh, that's starting to go live. So really excited. This week we've got 10 brain exercises that really work. I think I'd change it up from the resources and actually kind of get into some things that really uh, might benefit people in the long run. You know, a lot of times we're dealing with families and they see that their family member um, gets a little bit older and some of that cognitive decline and they want to know what they can do to actually help themselves. And there's some brain exercises out there that actually work and actually help people. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. There's some a great research. I'm only giving you 10. There's plenty of things on the web. I can give you some great authors. Uh, if you PM me or put in the comments in below, some great books out there, some great resources. So just, um, sorry, let me fix that. Um, some great resources out there. So just leave a comment and I'm happy to, to kind of plug away of some of the people that I've uh, done research on that I think are really valuable. So without further ado, let's get episode nine going. 10 tips, brain exercises that really, really work. Number one, a test recall. So one of the biggest things you want to start to do is start to work on, you know, recall memory. That's slipping. I'm sorry about this. As you can see, a little change of venue here today. So hopefully everyone likes it. Um, test recall. So here's a great uh, exercise you can be doing. Write out a, a grocery list. Start with 10, 15 items. Uh, you can start off making it pretty simple, you know, apples, bananas, oranges, or your actual grocery list. Put it aside, you know, look at it, memorize it, put it aside, come back an hour later and see if you can remember it. Then come back later that night, see if you can remember it. If it's too easy, simply make the words harder. So go from apple to asparagus uh, or, in, you know, um, watermelons, you know, start making the words a little harder or sirloin steak or, you know, again, anything, make them longer, a little bit different. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, international foods you can throw in there, really try to challenge yourself, you know, uh, with some, you know, something simple as like tacos to chimichangas. Um, and then even ask yourself, you know, try to spell the words. So anything that helps with the brain and starting to remember what you were doing, um, what you wrote down an hour ago. And if you can even remember the order that you put it in, that's even an added bonus. Number two on today's brain exercise is music. Now, music is the most powerful tool in the world. We see it a lot of times recently uh, with Alzheimer's and dementia patients. There's a great movie on Netflix out there called um, in, uh, Alive Inside, excuse me, Alive Inside, and it talks about the power of music. And everyone listens to music. Everyone has different types that they listen to, from classical to country to hip hop. Uh, but music is a powerful, powerful tool to actually help boost your memory. Um, it also helps, you know, it's also one of the last things of decline, you know, so, so when seniors have dementia, one of the last things they can still remember is music from a time when they were children. But as far as an exercise go, start a new instrument. If you ever wanted to pick up the guitar, the flute, the clarinet, well, this is your time, you know, pick up an instrument. There's plenty of online videos on, you know, how to learn simple stuff like happy birthday and start to learn how to play the music. This will challenge your mind, um, your vision, your memory, as far as remembering it. Um, a lot of great things uh, will be able to come from, from uh, music retention. Andy, you put up the, uh, the link to Alive Inside. Thank you very much, Andy, for doing that. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, definitely check out that movie. It's phenomenal. I highly recommend it. But yeah, the, the power of music is, is incredible. 
And this is, I mean, your music can be done through everything as far as just kind of, you know, hitting glasses or, um, you know, hitting, you know, the, the, the wood on a table. But picking up a new instrument and learning something new is a challenge for most people and for, you know, trying something new. And that's a great exercise to kind of get your brain doing something that maybe it obviously hasn't done before. Number three is math in the head. And I like to play this game actually with my daughter who's uh, now in third grade. You know, it's something simple as, you know, go to the grocery store, you get the total, you know, you pull out, let's say your total is $55 for groceries and you pull out, you know, a hundred dollar bill, you know, do the math in your head of how much change you should be getting back. And when you're talking to actual change of $55 and 23 cents, you know, how much change you're going to be getting back. So instead of, you know, using your cell phone to, to do quick ads or even the tips, you want to challenge yourself even harder, you know, 10%, 15%, 20% tips, start trying to do that type of stuff in your head instead of pulling out your, your calculator. The hard, the addition is, is obviously the easiest. Subtraction is the second. Multiplication is the third. And division is, is the hardest. So start playing games in your head on those terms. You know, start with something as, you know, seven plus seven, and then seven minus six, and then seven times five, and, you know, seven divided by seven. You know, so start playing games in your head quickly how, how quickly can you answer those questions? And, and start from single digits to double digits. If you can really challenge yourself, try triple digits. Um, but those are the different things that you can start doing in your head. And math is everywhere. You know, you always heard that from your teacher. Math is truly everywhere. From, again, a change from your dry cleaners, uh, tips that you're, for your Uber driver. Um, math is all around us. So there's plenty of opportunities to challenge yourself. You know, one of the things you can even do now is, you know, I'm at seven minutes and nine seconds. You know, so if I'm trying to go to 15 minutes, how much time do I have left to kind of get through the rest of these? Speaking of, let's let's move on. Number four, cook cooking class. You know, cooking is great. It's fun. It's something you can do with your friends. And you're, again, trying something new. It also affects your smell, your sight. You can actually hear the, the um, sounds of the, the different sounds, the different um food makes you know from a crispy taco to you know salts or a seasoning putting on something um the different sounds you'll be able to hear from it also the taste you know we talked about the different herbs the different spices different tastes so all of that type will go into you know when you're doing something new with the cooking class you might learn that you really like cinnamon or my favorite is old bay i try to put old bay on everything but certain things have a change the taste of, of old day. So like a cooking class is, is really great. Again, it hits almost all of the senses. You know, your sight, your hearing, your smell, your taste, all of it. Number five, learn a foreign language. Now you always hear people when they go abroad try to learn something nice, quick, but think about a trip you'd like to do and see if you can start to learn about it. I've got um, one of my staffing here at homecare.com is actually going uh, to Europe. And so she's going to try to learn some Italian before she goes over. Um, so there's easier language like Spanish and French or Latin. Then there's, you get, get into some of the harder languages, uh, Russian, Portuguese, even the more difficult being um, the Asian languages, such as Chinese and Mandarin. But pick up a, a new language. It's not going to come easy to you. Most of the stuff on this list is probably not going to come easy to you. But the more you get at it, the better off you're going to be. And what you're going to see is just the improvement that it has and the decline on any, uh, it lowers the risk of any cognitive decline. And that's what we're really talking about here today is brain exercises that really help um, the cognitive decline over time. So let's break over to the second half of our list, number six, create a word picture um, and a, a word game. So this is a, a fun car ride trip uh, that we, that I've always played. You know, you start with the word, the next person has to either start, have another word that starts with the first letter or last letter. Uh, we used to always do it with like countries or cities or states. Um, but it's, the, you know, see how far out you can actually go before you get stuck. You can write it down on a piece of paper, play it with a bunch of friends. But again, you just want to kind of get your mind thinking about things that probably doesn't think about all the time. Again, uh, 
different countries, different cities, different states. You can even break it out to different signs. You can break it off to um, things in your house. So you can ha play with it a little bit. But what the goal is to think of different things and get your mind thinking outside of the box of what your normal day-to-day -day type of uh, you know words that you use. Number seven, this was a fun one um, that I was, while I was reading, doing some research for this, uh, that I thought might be pretty cool. It's called Draw a Map from Memory. An example it gave in the article I was reading it was talking about, you know, if you came from a recent trip, you know, try to draw out uh, a map of where you were. So if you were in Austin, Texas, or if you were in Pittsburgh, see if you could draw a map of, you know, where your hotel was to the sports arena to the conference center. But let's take this a step further. You know, why couldn't you do this every single day? You know, if you've got a job, you know, like mine, or I'm outside, you know, why can't you simply just do a, a map of your day and try to figure out, you know, just draw on a piece of paper, okay, where is the hospital? Where is the assisted living? Where is the family that you met with today? Or if you're inside an office, maybe you can just draw the simple, the office, uh, the different, uh, um, businesses that are in that office building, or maybe the different offices, office buildings around where you are in that town. So I thought it might be something fun and cool. It's different than the normal brain exercises, but actually see if you could put together a map. You know, like we we're in third grade trying to draw all the the, the states in. Um, do the same thing for your for your day or a recent trip that you've gone on. Number eight, uh, challenge your taste buds. We kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but this kind of takes it the next step. And challenging your taste buds is not only trying new foods from different countries. You, many of you have probably seen a, Anthony Bourdain on the CNN and trying squid or uh, going to Eastern Asia countries and trying, you know, scorpion or something weird. I don't know if you have to go that extreme here. But, but go into um, your, your local uh, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's grocery store. You know, look at the different spices. Maybe it's a spice you've never seen before, you know. And, and, you know, talk to the local person to see what's in it. So make sure you don't have any allergic reactions. But, you know, try a new spice or try a new herb um, that, again, obviously make sure you clear of all allergies. But try something new on a plate you may have not tried it on before. So maybe it's on a, a breakfast or it's on a, a meat or it's on. So, I, for example, we were talking about Old Bay earlier, so which is a spice out here in Maryland. Uh, most people put it on crabs and seafood. But. I put it on my eggs, I put it on my meat, I put it on a lot of different things. Um, so trying new spices, trying it on different foods, uh, get those taste buds going. Again, hit, hit one of those senses that really gets the brain going. Number nine is uh, um, trying a new hobby. So, you know, as we get older, we, a lot of times we get stuck in our ways and we're doing the same thing day in and day out. Uh, we may think that we've tried ourselves new because we're on a softball team or, you know, we go out to the movies with our friends. But what about something that takes a skill, something new, um, like drawing, like photography, like painting, you know, where you're able to see different colors, where you're able to try different abstracts, uh, where you're able to, you know, if you're outside and you're here, you know, the idea is that, you know, pictures come alive. So are you hearing, you know, the birds as you draw them or as you take pictures of them? They're really helping those fine motor skills as far as the brain, the sight, the memory, all kind of come together when you're trying a new uh, activity like painting, photography, uh, drawing, that type of stuff. Knitting is also another one that uh, I had down here that would be, again, really great for those fine motor skills, um, getting your hands moving, get your sights and everything else as far as with color. Uh, number 10, um, and this kind of hits up my alley, um, exercise and trying a new sport. Um, so first and foremost, we all know that we all must be exercising. You've seen the big uh, ad on TV with the government with the, you know, play 60, 60 minutes a day for children for activity. But that goes same true for, for adults. You know, the being outside, getting your body moving, getting that heart rate up and, and going is, is crucial to keeping that brain healthy. You know, if you think about it, you know, after you've done an exercise, the endorphins and everything in your brain are going and you feel better. You know, anytime you're, you're in an argument, or right, anytime I'm always, you always hear, just walk away. Well, that actually means walk away, take a break, get outside, get those endorphins going. You know, most of, most of the time, if you've gone for a walk, 
You know, it might be a struggle getting up at six o'clock in the morning to go out and do that walk. But how great do you feel for the rest of the day that you've actually, one, accomplished something, but two, you just feel better because you've, you've gotten your brain thinking and moving. You know, and this stuff is easy. You know, it's simply taking the stairs. Or one of the things I do at our office is I park far away. I pick one of the farthest spots possible. And I walk and then I walk up the stairs to our offices. Um, we can also try new things. Uh, you know, most, most gyms will let you try, do a trial class. So if you've never done spinning on a bike, if you've never done yoga, if you've never done, um, you know, if you've got a big gym where they might have basketball courts or tennis courts, tr swimming, try something new that you've never done before. And, and exercise, again, is huge uh, for the brain as far as getting it moving, getting it thinking. And it, those positive facts, those positive reactions. So those are my 10 tips for today. Again, as a quick recall, uh, number one is actually recall. So uh, write down a grocery list, pick 10 items, write it down, look at it, memorize it, come back an hour later, see if you can still remember it. If it's too easy, wait till that evening. If it's even easier, try harder words. Go, go international, try chimichangas to the list, see if you can remember that and see if you can spell it. Number two, music instrument. Learn to play something new. You know, amazing how it really, again, working a different side of your brain that you may have not have challenged before. Number three, math in your head. Math is everywhere. Grocery store, tipping. You know, see if you can figure it out on your own. Number four, cooking class. Sights, smells, taste, eyes, beautiful. All the senses are hit right on that one. Cooking class, try, try a new cooking class. Five. Learn a foreign language. You want to take a, a trip, even if you can't afford it in your mind, learn a new language. Italian, Spanish, French. Challenge yourself with some Cantonese and Mandarin. Number six, create a word picture. Um, create a, a word, play this with your friends. See if they can start using the first letter or last letter of that word and continue it all around. Challenge yourself by making it just cities or just states or just some things in your home. Number seven, draw a picture of a place that you visited. Draw a map of where everything was. So where your hotel was, sports arena, conference center. Number eight, challenge your taste. Try a new spice, try a new herb, get things different. Get those spices going, get your brain thinking, get it smelling and tasting and feeling things that it hasn't tasted before. Number nine, try a new hobby, painting, photography, uh, see new sights and sounds, new angles. Practice those fine motor skills with knitting, uh, puzzles. Number 10, exercise. Try a new sport. If you've never done yoga or spinning, go to a class. Usually the first class is free at most gyms. Give it a shot. See how you feel. Because I guarantee those endorphins will be rolling and you'll feel fantastic. And fantastic is how I feel every time I get on this. So thank you everyone for coming on board today. I really appreciate it. Your questions, your enthusiasm, your comments, the emails I get and PMs I get throughout the week really, really hit me right here. I really appreciate all of that. Um, it's what gets me going every single week. So if you do like this, please, uh, if you want to click like right now, I'd really appreciate it. But if you really like it, share it. Thank you again so much for tuning in. I will probably see you next week. Oh, a uh, big, big announcement. I've got some great guests coming up. Uh, next week, we're going to have uh, Brian Wheeler from Custom Senior Living Search uh, Placement Agency. So people that are looking for a little help or trying to understand what the difference is between assisted livings and independent livings or how to do a tour, got Brian coming up. I've got Gwendolyn Klein from um, Values Based, um, who's going to be able to help with some laws that are currently going into effect, uh, also with money management. I've got a great Alzheimer's team and dementia team coming up. Uh, people from uh, Arden Courts and some um, Insight Memory Care Center. I've got some guests coming up from hospice and much, much more. So please continue to turn in every Friday. I know this week was 930. But most of our times will be at 1. Until next time, have a great one.